Chapter 2, Fundamental Data Types, Part 2. So we've been talking about variables and data types. Sometimes we don't want to use a variable. We just want to use a number, and that's called a number literal. Literal is the word that we use when something's not going to change. So if we have amount AMT equals 6 times 12.0, um, 6 and 12.0 are both examples of numeric literals. Pi equals 3.14. That 3.14 is an example of a numeric literal. Canval equals 0 0.335. 0 0.335 is an example of a numeric literal. We sometimes we can use numeric literals, but sometimes we choose not to because it's not very descriptive. What is 6? We don't know. What is 0 0.335? We don't know. It might be more descriptive if we can create a, uh, a variable or a constant where we're going to store that value so we can be more descriptive. We'll get into those constants in a little bit. Floating point numbers are numbers that have a fractional part and internally they're stored in four different parts. A sign, whether it's positive or negative, usually we just leave the positive off but put the minus if it's negative. The mantissa, the mantissa is the part to the left of the uh, decimal point and then the radix and the radix is what base number we're using and the exponent is raised to what power. So minus 5 has a sign of negative 1 because it's, it's a minus. It has a mantissa of 5 and a radix of 10, exponent of 0. Any number to the, to the exponent 0 is 1, so it's like 5 times 1. So it would be negative 1 times 5 times 1. The answer is negative 5. That's just how they're stored. You don't need to know that specific um, uh, information for this class. It's just for those who are interested in how floating point numbers are stored. They are stored differently than integers. Also, there are two data types in Java that have a uh, that are floating point data types. And one is a double, and it has twice as much storage as a float. Float is the other one. We're not going to use the float. We're just going to make it a little bit easier, and we're going to rely on the double data type and we won't use the float data type. The double is more precise because it has it takes up more memory so we can store more decimal places. So we're just going to rely on the double in this class. Naming variables, you should try to name them such that they are descriptive. The programmer can name them anything they want. Sometimes I think that coming up with variable names is one of the hardest parts of programming because I don't know. But if we're uh, declaring a variable that's going to store the volume of a can, for example, can volume is much better than CV because CV isn't very descriptive. And we follow these rules when coming up with variable names. The rules must start with a letter or an underscore. I tend to prefer letters. I find underscores to be a little bit confusing. So start your variable names with a letter. You can uh, use the, the variable names can contain letters upper or lower case and digits or underscores. You can't use special characters like the question mark, the percent sign, um, the space, so those are not permitted. So letters and numbers are permitted. Um, and use camel casing to separate the words. So be as descriptive as possible and use an uppercase letter for the second and third and fourth and so on words in a variable name. Um, those simple rules, uh, excuse me, and finally don't use reserved words. So if a word already means something in Java, don't use it as a variable name. For example, int is a reserved word. Double is a reserved word. Don't try to name a variable int or a variable double. It won't work. So memorize these rules. There's no easier way to do it. Just write these four rules down on in your notes. Put them on your bathroom mirror, wherever it is that you're going to refer to them frequently so that you memorize these rules. You will be tested on them. Here are some variable names in Java. Can volume 1 is a legal variable name. X is a legal variable name. And if you're doing a mathematical expression that uses X, then it's, it's legal, but if you're using X to refer to the number of cans in a six pack, it's not a good idea because it's not descriptive. Um, can volume, notice that it starts with an uppercase C. That's technically legal, but we don't do it because we reserve the uppercase letter, the first letter being uppercase, for class names. So don't name your variable with an, a starting with an uppercase letter. Six pack is not legal because it starts with a number. Can volume is not legal because it contains a space. Double is not legal because it's a reserved word. 
liter divided by fluid point ounces is not legal because it contains the slash and the period. The assignment statement is the equal sign and it says take the stuff on the right hand side of the assignment operator and put it in the location on the left. So when we have int cans per pack equals six, we're taking that six and we're putting it in the location designated by cans per pack. Cans per pack equals eight. We'll if we've put a six there already, that will be replaced by the eight. So cans per pack equals eight, gets rid of the six, it's gone forever, and puts an eight there instead. The equal sign is not used to compare two things. All the equal sign is the assignment operator says take the stuff on the right and put it in the location on the left. Here's the syntax for the assignment statement. If we're initializing a value, we need to uh, provide the data type followed by the name, then equals and some value. So either a literal or a uh, uh, variable or constant. Um, if we've already declared the variable, you only declare a variable once. So if we've already declared total and set it equal to bottle to, to zero, and then we want to set it equal to something else like bottles times bottle volume, then we, we do not put the data type, we just put the name of the variable, the equal sign, the assignment operator, followed by the expression. The expression, whatever it turns out to be, will replace the value that was previously in total. We can also put the name on both sides of the assignment operator. So total equals total plus cans time can volume. It'll take whatever's in total and add it to cans time can volume, whatever that turns out to be, add those two together and store the result back in total. So that is perfectly legal. Notice on each of these assignment statements that you've just got one location on the left-hand side of the assignment operator, one variable name on the left-hand side of the equal sign. To put an expression over there like total plus total uh, would be wrong. You only have one location on the left-hand side of the equal sign. So if we say total volume equals 2.13 and then we say total volume equals total volume plus two, that total volume plus two results in 4.13 and would store the result back in total volume. So it calculates the stuff on the right and then puts it in the location on the left. Just like that. Declarations versus assignment. Variable declarations and an assignment statement are different. So when we say int cans per pack equals six, we are declaring that variable and providing an initial value. When we say cans per pack equals eight, that's an assignment statement. So anything cans per pack must be already declared and any value that was in that location will be wiped out and replaced with the eight. Declarations define a new variable and give it an initial value. Assignments modify the value that has already been created, the variable that has already been created.